I am. I'm only burning my half. Now you probably know better than to invest with the Joker, however today many CEOs are burning through cash just as fast, doing share buybacks of their own company stock. In this video I'm going to explain stock buybacks and why most share buybacks hurt long term investors. Knowing this information will help you identify the warning signs of a bad buyback program and allow you to protect yourself against this destructive use of capital. Now I will say that not all share buyback programs are bad by default. In some cases buying back shares can be a sensible way for companies to use their cash. However, in many cases it's just a way to temporarily boost earnings and potentially could be indicative of longer term issues with the company. This means that you as investors can't afford to take these buybacks at face value. We'll discuss when a buyback actually makes sense as well as the several warning signs you should look out for of a bad buyback program. So before we get into that, let's explain what a share buyback actually is. Simply put, a share buyback is when a company repurchases shares of its own stock and then retires them or removes them from circulation. This can benefit shareholders because when you purchase shares of a stock, you're purchasing a portion of a company. So when the company buybacks shares and retires them, you now own a relatively larger percentage of that company. As such, this means you also own a larger percentage of the cash flow and earnings generated by the company. One reason management might decide to initiate a share buyback is because they believe that may offer the greatest potential for shareholder returns in the future. At any given time, a company has many different options for how they can invest and use their cash. They might spend some of that improving operational performance in one division or developing their brand in another, or spending a portion of that on research and development. Each of those options has a potential return it could generate for the company, as well as its associated risks. If management believes that the company's share price is currently undervalued to its intrinsic value, repurchasing shares might be a high return alternative which could then provide more value to shareholders than reinvesting in the current business opportunities. In addition, buying back your own company's shares is a relatively low risk way of using extra cash. For example, investing heavily into research and development is relatively risky as there's no guarantee that it'll produce any significant driver of business performance in the future. If there's little to show from that R&D spending, there's no getting that cash back. Additionally, acquisitions are another risky strategy for using company cash. Mergers oftentimes don't live up fully to expectations and many times companies end up overpaying for those acquisitions. However, if management believes that their own company's shares are undervalued, a share buyback program can be an effective way to return value to shareholders. With that being said, there are situations where a share buyback program can be a very bad idea and hurt long-term shareholders. We'll go through six of these red flags that you should keep an eye out for whenever you hear a company announce a share buyback program. The first of which is when the shares are overvalued. Understand that share buyback programs should only be initiated when management is very confident that the company is undervalued. If a company is buying up its own shares at $60 per share, but really the intrinsic value of the company is only at $45 per share, that's obviously a very poor investment decision. When a company is buying its stock when it's overvalued, it'll destroy shareholder value in the long term. In that case, the company would be better off instead of spending that money on a share buyback program, simply paying that cash out as a dividend to shareholders and let them reinvest that cash more effectively. Some companies try and use a share buyback program to return capital to shareholders in a tax efficient manner and thus rely more on buybacks compared to dividends. However, this benefit is again completely negated if they're buying their shares at a premium to their intrinsic value. A second warning flag is when a company is using share buybacks primarily to boost earnings per share. Using share buybacks is one way that a company can increase EPS or earnings per share without actually increasing earnings. This works because when the company goes into the market to buy back shares of its own stock, it reduces the available share count and thus means that the available earnings are divided up now among fewer shareholders. The less shares there are outstanding, the higher the earnings per share will be. Initially, this might seem like a great thing as an investor because you're getting more earnings for every share of the company that you own. However, don't let this fool you. Contrary to popular belief, increasing the earnings per share in this manner doesn't increase the company's fundamental value. 
That's because companies have to burn large piles of cash, as you saw in the intro, to buy back these shares. Based on this, savvy investors will adjust their valuations for both the decrease in shares as well as the decrease in cash. This adjustment in valuations partially and sometimes fully negates the effect of the earnings per share boost. Even understanding all this, oftentimes there's a lot of excitement still surrounding the announcements of these large buybacks, and the potential of increased earnings per share in the future can give some of these stocks a short-term pop. But unless the company's shares are undervalued, the only people to benefit from this are the short-term investors who sell on the news. This will only hurt long-term investors if the shares are overvalued. Unfortunately, there are many examples in corporate America of this taking place. Take a look, for instance, at Bed Bath & Beyond, both at their stock price and at the amount of shares purchased through their share repurchase program. In this case, Bed Bath & Beyond continue to ramp up their share repurchase program, despite the stock trading at high valuations and this not being an effective use of shareholder cash. It's embarrassing to see that the buyback program actually peaked at the stock's all-time high. And since then, the stock has lost more than 75% of its value. To put this in perspective, Bed Bath & Beyond over the past five years spent $6 billion repurchasing shares of their own stock, and the company is now worth less than $2 billion today. Bed Bath & Beyond would be in a much better position had they kept that cash on the balance sheet or used that to reinvest in their business, which is certainly needed given that it's a brick and mortar store facing the pressures of e-commerce retail. A third red flag is if the stock buyback program is done to directly benefit executives. The compensation package of many executives are in the form of stock options. These options allow executives to buy newly issued stock in the company at a previously determined price. With the issuance of these new shares, there's what's called stock dilution, in which with more shares added to the outstanding share base, that your share as an individual investor becomes less of the original company. Because of this, many executives see this buyback program as a way to absorb the extra stock issuance. This will offset the dilution of existing shares and any potential reduction in earnings per share. This is a very convenient way for executives to reward themselves with lucrative stock options. It can also help to temporarily boost the share price in the short term, which will allow executives to get a higher price per share when they exercise these options and sell their shares. What's more, in addition to share options, additional CEO and other executive bonuses are oftentimes tied to earnings per share, which give then an additional incentive to buy back shares to try and increase that earnings per share number. This can mean there's a misalignment of incentives between management and the shareholder when there may be better opportunities to spend that cash either reinvesting in the business or other opportunities. A fourth red flag about share buybacks is if they used borrowed money to fund them. This can be a particularly destructive use of shareholder capital because not only does it reduce the cash reserves within the balance sheet of the company, but management might take on additional debt into the company in order to have the funds to purchase even more shares of the company. They might do this on the assumption that the cash flow of the company will continue to grow and thus they'll be able to pay the interest on that debt with the new cash flow. While this might work in theory, if it doesn't in practice, long-term investors will get hurt. Additionally, this increase in borrowing can hurt the company's credit rating, reducing their ability to get future financing in the future if they were to need it, and again, reduces those cash reserves, which could be used as a cushion if times get tough. Funding share buybacks in this manner increases the potential risk down the road of the company running into financial troubles and sometimes potentially even bankruptcy. A fifth red flag would be if a share buyback program is initiated to avoid being acquired. In the business world, there are many mergers that are done where both companies are interested in joining together. However, there are some times when one company is interested in acquiring another, but that company being acquired doesn't want to be bought out. In this case, one thing that management could do is attempt to buy back their own shares so that the acquiring company can't get enough shares to take over the company. However, oftentimes doing this requires the use of debt, which then again runs into the same issues we discussed in the last red flag. If successful, the leveraged buyback could increase the share price of the original company so much that the acquiring company no longer can afford to buy them out. However, doing so adds a significant amount of debt to the balance sheet that otherwise would not have been there. And a final warning sign is if there's simply nowhere else to invest the money. 
Again, buybacks can and do make sense when the company seems to be undervalued. However, if that's not the case, the company should have several business opportunities where the cash can be deployed more effectively. If a company is not undervalued, yet they're continuing to buy back their shares, it could be a signal that there are not many investment opportunities within their current business for them to use their cash flow effectively. This could potentially be a warning sign for the business and is something to keep in mind. If the company is undergoing poor financial performance or is in a secular decline, a temporarily boost from a share buyback program will not solve their financial troubles. Now, with all this being said, share buyback programs can be effective, but only if they're used properly and when the company's shares are undervalued. Oftentimes, it's hard and difficult to find management whose incentives are aligned within their share buyback program with the shareholder interests. However, one classic example of ethical corporate governance and alignment with shareholder interest regarding a buyback program is with Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway shareholders. Now, Warren Buffett has stated many times that he will only repurchase Berkshire Hathaway's stock if he believes it's trading fundamentally below its intrinsic value. This is nearly guaranteeing that when Warren Buffett repurchases shares of Berkshire Hathaway stock, that he's using capital effectively and is returning value to long-term shareholders. When investing, look for companies that have management aligned with shareholder interests and take a critical look to see if the company is undervalued when a share buyback program is announced. If not, then the company may be soon burning cash faster than the Joker. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more investing content, click my face to subscribe and also click the notification bell. That's the only way you'll be guaranteed to be notified of any new videos that come out. Until next time, thank you all for watching. My name's Michael and I will see you in the next video.